Welcome to Electra Online. And now we're going to take another look at the Wheatstone Bridge. Now, in a few videos ago, we did see the Wheatstone Bridge, but the reason why we brought that up is because we, we used what we call the delta to y conversion to try and find the equivalent, the equivalent resistance of a Wheatstone Bridge resistor circuit, where we had those four resistors on the outside and we had a low resistor, resistor cross from point A to point B in the middle. And so we tried to find the equivalent resistance by taking one of the deltas of the Wheatstone Bridge and turn it into a Y uh, y formation that was the delta to y conversion which made it a lot easier to find the equivalent resistance of a of a bridge circuit like this but what we're going to do here in this video is use a wheatstone bridge circuit to try and, and find very accurately the resistance of an unknown resistor so let me go ahead and circle this one so in this case this is the unknown resistor we put we put that into a bridge circuit like this here we have what we call a variable resistor or a rheostat. With other words, we can actually change the resistance of this resistor, and I'll show you in just a moment why that is necessary. The two other resistors on the right side are resistor 1 and resistor 2, and they're set up in a certain ratio. We'll get to that in just a moment. And then between A and B, we have a current meter which has a small internal resistance. Now, what we need to know here, what we need to understand, is that if the voltage is the potential at A and B are equal to each other, then there will be no current going between A and B. If the potential at B is higher than the potential at A, there will be current from B to A. And if the potential at A is higher than the potential at B, there will be a current from A to B. And the current meter will indeed be able to measure that. So what we're trying to do here is we're going to try and adjust the, adju the adjustable resistor here until the current between A and B stops. So th there's no longer any current between A and B. That would then mean that the potential at A is exactly equal to, to the potential at B. Now before I go on to that, let's find out what the potential at B is equal to because that we can already figure out. We know that we apply a total of 10 volts across the bridge. We have a 10 ohm resistor there and a 40 ohm resistor. So we should be able to figure out what the voltage drop is from this point to this point. Remember that this point is at 10 volts and this point is at 0 volts. And so the potential difference across the 10 ohm resistor, let's call that the delta V, that is equal to the voltage applied, which is 10 volts, times the ratio of the resistance across R1 divided by the sum of the two resistors, R1 and R2, because that would be the total resistance across the right side of that, that bridge circuit. So in this case, that would be equal to 10 volts times, that would be 10 ohms divided by 10 ohms plus 40 ohms. So that would be equal to 10 volts uh, times 10 divided by 50, which is 1 fifth, which is equal to 2 volts. So the potential difference from this point to this point is 2 volts. That means that the voltage at B, that implies that the voltage at B is equal to 8 volts. Okay, now let's say that we do not know what this resistance is. That's actually the purpose of Wheatstone Bridge is very accurately determine the resistance of that resistor. So R sub X is equal to question mark. And how do we find that? Well, we know that if the potential at A is equal to the potential at B, that means the voltage drop from there to there must be equal to the voltage drop from there to there. And so we can say that the voltage at A, the voltage at A is equal to the 10 volts minus the delta, the delta V at A, meaning minus the potential drop from there to there. And if that is also 2 volts, then the potential at A is equal to the potential at B. So the delta at VA, so this would be 10 volts, minus, and we're going to get the same thing right over there, 10 volts, that's the voltage applied at this point compared to this point right there, times the ratio of this resistor, that would be the variable resistor, divided by the sum of the two resistors, which is the variable resistor plus the unknown resistor that we're trying to find the value of. And notice that if this is going to be equal to 2 volts, if this is equal, not 2 volts, but this is equal to, let's say, 1 fifth, the same ratio that we had over there, if this portion is equal to 1 fifth, 
then 10 volts times 150 will be 2 volts, 2 volts subtract from 10 volts will be 8 volts, and then A will be at the same potential as B, and there will be no current measured by a very sensitive current meter right here on the Wheatstone Bridge. So what we're looking for is we're looking for uh, the value, so we're going to then be changing the value, and we'll see in just a moment how that works. So let's say we do that, and we find this to be equal to 12.5 ohms. So we're, we're changing the, the real stat, we're changing the variable, uh, the variable resistor, and finally when we find the correct value at 12.5 ohms, the current in here stops, which means that the voltage there must therefore be also 8 volts. So what we can say is when the variable resistor is equal to 12.5 ohms, then V at A is also equal to 8 volts, which means the voltage drop across there is 2 volts. Now, the delta V is going to be equal to, in this case, 2 volts, which is going to be equal to 10 volts times the variable resistor right here. So that's the variable resistor divided by the variable resistor plus the unknown resistor. But remember, in order to get that current to stop, we had to change the variable resistor until it was equal to 12.5 ohms. When it was 12.5 ohms, we then knew that the potential here was equal to potential there. That means that this was equal to 2 volts. So now we can go ahead and replace this by 12.5 ohms. So we have 2 volts equals 10 volts times 12.5 divided by 12.5 plus our unknown resistor. And now all we have to do here is figure out that unknown resistor. Okay. How do we do that? Well, first of all, we divide both sides by 10, so we get 0 0.2. Oop, I need a little bit more room here. Let me go down a little bit further. So 2 volts divided by 10 volts is uh, 0 0.2 is equal to 12.5 divided by 12.5 plus R sub X. Now we cross multiply. Let me move the whole thing over here. So we cross multiply. We have 0 0.2 times 12.5 plus R sub X is equal to 12.5 on the right side. Okay, don't like those decimals. Let's multiply both sides of the equation by 10. So that gives us 2. So I'm just simply multiplying both sides of the equation by 10 to get rid of some of these decimal places. So now we get uh, 2 times 12.5 plus R sub X equals 10 times that, which is 125. We're almost there. So now we go 2 times 12.5 would be 25 plus 2 R sub X equals 125. Subtract 25 from both sides, so we get 2 R sub X is equal to 125 minus 25. So 2 times R sub X is equal to, uh, whoop, I'm trying to get too far ahead of myself, is equal to 100. So R sub X is equal to 50 ohms. And that's how we find the exact value of this unknown resistor. And that's why we use the Wheatstone Bridge. So now we realize this is equal to 50 ohms. And really what it comes down to is, if the potential at A is equal to the potential at B, and let me write that down, because that's, and I'll use a different color, because that's very important to understand. If the potential at A equals the potential at B, all that simply means is that the ratio of this resistor to this resistor exactly equals the ratio of this resistor to this resistor. So in other words, we can say that the variable resistor divided by the R sub X is equal to this resistor divided by this resistor. So another easier way to figure out what R sub X is, we simply then turn the equation around. I have R sub X divided by the variable resistor equals, so I turn the left side around, so I turn the other side around. This would be 40 divided by 10, and therefore R sub X is equal to the variable resistor times 40 over 10. The variable resistor we said was 12.5 ohms, so it's 12.5 ohms times 40 divided by 10, which is indeed equal to the 50 ohms that we found before. So even an easier way to use the Wheatstone bridge is adjust the variable resistor so that the current across here stops, which means that the potential here equals the potential there, and therefore the ratio of those two resistors must then, must then match the ratio of those two resistors, which makes it really easy then to find the unknown, unknown resistor R sub X. And that's the purpose 
one of the main purposes of the Wheatstone Bridge, it becomes a very accurate current meter. And that's how we use it.